So let's check out Fedora Linux 39. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. And today I wanted to dive deep into Fedora Linux 39, which is the latest release that's powered by the Linux kernel 6.5. And it comes with a brilliant GNOME 45 integration and introduces Onyx to the family of Fedora's immutable OSs. So let's go down there and hop over to the website so we can cover everything about it. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. Now, before we jump into all the exciting updates of Fedora 39, let's take a moment to celebrate its 20th anniversary. And Fedora has come a long way since its inception in 2003. And Fedora 39 continues the tradition of excellence. Now let's explore the highlights of this fantastic release. And as you can see, I'm at fedoraproject.org. And of course, I always have the link down in the description of the video, but we all know that Fedora is 100% free and open source. And so let's scroll down a little bit. I wanted to show you guys this. They have the workstation edition, so you can download that there. The community server, so you can download that server edition they have an iot edition they also have a lightweight vm environment and the container optimizer os as well so you can download whichever one you need just to test out fedora and let's go down a little further but here are a couple of the options that you have it's a immutable desktop the fedora desktop experience you know with an additional layer of security and reliability fedora spins if you prefer a alternative desktop environment such as kde plasma you can definitely get that install like and then also xfce you can download a fedora spin for your preferred desktop environment and use that to install fedora pre-configured for the desktop environment of your choice and that's similar to the flavors of ubuntu which is like you have kubuntu which is the kde version and zubuntu which is that xfce version so the same concept and then Fedora Labs, you can check that out as well. And then Fedora Alternative Downloads, you can click there. And that, that's just talking about how you actually download the software. So most of the time they have like a BitTorrent download or you can download it from different locations. They also have a network installer format. So you can download that one as well. Now Fedora 39 is all about combining cutting edge features with stability, making it suitable for a wide range of users from casual desktop users to developers and system admins. And one of the main standout features of Fedora 39, which we can go back up here and let's just click on learn more. One of the standout features of Fedora 39 is this integration of GNOME 45.1. And that's delivering a vanilla GNOME experience. And with this update, you'll experience dynamic virtual desktops, a performance boost file manager, and they reorganize system settings with more user-friendlier options. And you guys will see that once we get it installed. And another cool thing, Fedora 39 is also powered by the Linux kernel 6.5, which I spoke on earlier in a video. And that's something that Fedora has always done. They have always adopted the latest Linux kernel, which offers user enhancement, performance improvements, and broader hardware support. That's one cool thing about Fedora. Now, another cool thing for this release also introduces Onyx, which is a new member of Fedora's family of immutable OS. And this is featuring the budgie desktop environment. So that's something I'll show you guys in a minute as well. Now, additionally, Fedora 39 brings updates to the core applications like Firefox, LibreOffice, Rhythmbox, and more. And the developer stack is also refreshed, making it a comprehensive choice for a wide range of users. So lastly, before I get to the install, I want to show you guys at least the documentation or at least how to get to it. You just click right there on the main page. There's the, the downloads button and the documents button. You click there and it'll take you to the Fedora workstation document. And it's the same for the, let's say, server edition. So let's go back to the front page and hit learn more. 
Let me go down here, server. All right, so let's head over and download our desktop edition right fast. So let's go download now, and this will pull up all your options. They even bring up the Fedora Media Writer, so you can download this ISO writer. So if in case you need to write it to a USB stick or a CD, if you still have one of those, they do have a Windows version, Mac OS version, and a Linux version. But what I'm gonna do is download the for Intel and AMD x86-64 live ISO. And down here they have the ARM version as well as the Power PPC 64 LE system. So let's download the live ISO up here. Boom, it will start our download for us. Now, before I get, I want to show you guys how to get one of those immutable versions. So if we go back home, click up here at Get Fedora. They'll show you the immutable desktops. So you got Silver Blue and Fedora Silver Blue is an immutable desktop operating system aimed at good support for container focused workflows. And then Kanat, which is our KDE based desktop. And then we have a Sway based desktop and I don't wanna mess up this name. So I won't even attempt to say it. And then Onyx, Fedora Onyx, that is the other immutable desktop. And this is based on budget. And if we also check out the spins, there is an XFCE desktop, Cinnamon with Compass, i3 tiling so if you want a lxqt desktop as well lxde soas desktop you got your fos which is for phone that's super cool to see and then sway tiling budgie desktop i don't know if i said the cinnamon but cinnamon as well and then one other cool port about fedora they do have some other additions and this is the lab edition so the astronomy that's for it has a whole bunch of free tools for amateur and professional astronomers comp neuro which is a plethora free and open source computational modeling tools for neuroscience so super cool to see like fedora is crazy with the types of desktops they have the design suite multimedia production all that good stuff gaming jam for the audio enthusiasts so people that create music there's a python classroom so that's super cool to see you know for people that's trying to learn python programming language so that's dope and it's created for students which i thought was super cool the robotics suite so it comes with a whole bunch of robotics software packages scientific there's uh the scientific software tools and numerical tools as well and it's used for research and then we had a security lab and this is kind of like that cali version so if you look deep in here, you'll find a lot of versions of Fedora that you can install that are set up for specific purposes. It has all the tools that you need. And I need to go through and start reviewing a few of these Fedora versions or these lab versions, cause they're super dope. But let's go down and hop over to our virtual machine and get that addition of Fedora installed with GNOME on it. All right, so we booted into Fedora and the first thing that'll pop up, it basically says, welcome to Fedora. You can install now or you you can test the system. This allows you to test the live ISO. But what we're gonna do is run through the installer right fast. So let's hit install Fedora. It'll open up that installer for us. And it's super simple to install. If you've installed anything that's Red Hat based, then you'll probably understand how this installer works. It's not that difficult. So let's run through it right fast. Let's hit continue. This is basically just selecting our language. So if you live in a different country, you can select your language there. Pretty much all the different languages here. I'm gonna select English. So let's hit continue. And then you got a couple of options in here. So your keyboard layout, which it auto automatically detected it as English US. We don't have to go in there, but the installation location what you want to do is go in and select your drive hit done and that'll go down and select that and you can partition the drive and then also your time and date it automatically pulled that i'm on the west coast so it pulled up los angeles time zone so we're good to go there so we can hit the begin installation so let's run through this and this will go through partition the drives and then copy all the software over to the system well basically install it and i'll be back when this finishes all right so the installation is complete and i hit my face so you guys can see what it shows over here but fedora is now successfully installed and ready for you to use so go ahead and reboot and you can start using it so let's go on and hit finish installation and we actually have to uh reboot the system because it's still in that live iso so let's go down and reboot hit the power button hit restart 
boom that'll get us out the live eye and then i'll be back when it boots back up all right cool so you might have been confused you didn't see a lot of things when we did the installation but this stuff is handled after the system is installed and so let's go through the setup right fast so let's hit start setup location settings you can turn it on turn it off whatever automatic problem reporting if you need to and that helps them you know collect information so they can improve the operating system so let's hit next there and then third reported repositories if you want to enable them you can go down and enable them just click that button and i'll go down and enable them and let's go down and hit next and then your online accounts if you want let's hit skip and then now we can set up our account so let's go down and type our account name and i'm gonna just put josh and then you got your photo you know all that stuff if you have a drive connected and then go down and set your password which you typically see you know what i'm saying and that's why i wanted to point that out to you guys you typically see that within the installer you'll see a lot of this within the installer but and i'm sure if you're watching this video you probably installed fedora before but if you haven't this is how they do things it's a little bit different from other distros so let's go down and hit next there it'll set our password for us and then start using fedora linux and it will finish that setup in the background so let's go down and hit start using fedora linux and it will finish that configuration i'll come back and it'll pop up with the login screen all right so we're done there we go so let's take the tour right fast let's go right in here and take the tour let's uh click next get an overview you can press the super key that will allow you to open up windows and apps and all that good stuff so and the super key just like so you guys know that are maybe new to linux the super key is the quote-unquote windows key so just showing you guys that but just type in the search so that's part of those new features with this latest version of gnome keep on top with workspaces so you got your different workspaces as usual Let's go down here next up and down so that's some touchpad features that are there you know it's super cool they, they kind of emulate what you do on mac os so that's dope to see left right that'll just you know it just kind of breaks down what you can do and that's pretty much it of the tour i thought it would have showed a little bit more like something with the look of gnome but I guess that's not in there. And I haven't installed this operating system. This is my first time installing it, this latest version. So let me go down and fix our resolution right fast so you guys can see it a little bit better on here. And man, I totally forgot to put my face back up there. What's up guys? <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. But let's go down and close this right fast fast but there we go we have fedora and this is that gnome edition like i said and so you can click up here this will open up all your workspaces and you can scroll over here uh, you guys have seen the latest version of gnome and a lot of the features that you have so it's super easy to use you know what i'm saying so let's go on and show you guys some of the stuff on the top bar on the top task bar which it's not that difficult to use if you use gnome or if you've seen the new version of gnome it's not that difficult to use they got a whole bunch of added features in this latest release least of gnome which takes fedora to a whole new level in my opinion but if you click up here you got all your options you know power down shut shut down reboots lock as well you can get into your settings here as well this will allow you to make all your changes on the system so if you knew the gnome i'm just showing you guys how to get to it but this is what i was looking for this is what i was thinking they would show you know in the tour because you guys know i always like setting that dark theme it works better best for me you know what i'm saying as far as seeing it and that's one of the changes i want to quickly make but let's look at some of the apps on here right fast so let's open this up and then we hit the show apps page and first let's open up the terminal and then run a u name so we can check out the kernel version we all know it's correct so it's 6.5.6300 so we good to go latest linux kernel so that's what it's supposed to come with that's what it has and then let's run the h top right fast just see what's on here and it looks like h top is not on here let's run top top is always on any system you may have to install h top h top just looks a little bit better that's essentially the difference but let's press q to quit get out of there and i just kind of wanted to look at a little bit of the information that's there and see what's using majority of the cpu which is which was gnome it kind of went away now it's top actually using the most so the system is running pretty good to say it's in a virtual machine and i only gave it like eight gigabytes of memory and two cpu cores just to just so it'll run properly and we can see it in action now let's check out some more apps which i didn't really check any apps but let's go to software center so you guys can see that but yeah we have some updates and 
we could have ran those updates from the terminal but this is the easiest way if you're learning linux you can go down and do all your updates from here so let's go down here download and then we can just kind of look at other software while that's running in the background file explorer let's go down open that up and as you can see that looks super cool the way it looks let's make the folders a little smaller that looks better but yeah as you can see you know it looks super clean in here as far as the file explorer goes let's go into about and that's the gnome you know file manager so let's go down and close that but let's see what version of firefox we got on here that it actually came with all right cool so that's up let's check out the current version and let's go down to help and then about firefox and we got 119 it's good to see it's probably gonna make it an update within this update. Looks like we're getting a bunch of fonts or languages. So languages, different languages and fonts, which really is not needed. But we are also getting a, a major system update. So general system updates such as security and bug fixes, fixes and performance improvements. Now also calendar update files. That's an update as well. Maps, G Streamer, Multimedia Codex, and just so you can, you know, just so you know, guys know, but you can check out what's installed on the system so boxes is on here that's cool to see but you can explore here and you can check out all the software under here and you can also search up here at the top left and it's going to let our updates finish and then let's check out some more software right fast let's see that's that calendar app uh, which is getting updated so super cool to see that gnome calendar app let's go into here and pretty much everything you need for a system write-off is on you got all the software you need you know you got your video player terminal obviously boxes you get so if you want to run virtual machines libre office so all of it the writer the calc the powerpoint so impress that's on here and then a pdf document viewer or that's the scanner that's the scanner i forgot about that you got cheese so you can work with your webcams you know all that good stuff rhythm box which i always like to see this is one of my favorite music players on linux i've been using this one since the beginning and i don't talk about it that much but this is my favorite i think i did a video on it a long time ago i probably need to revisit it because they have updated it but rhythm box is really the main one i used to use because i stored it out on no and this was in Ubuntu. And so let's go down and close that. And let's go back up in here again and check out some more of the software. But we got our maps, you know, all that good stuff, the Fedora Media Writer that comes on the system by default. And also under here, you got your utilities. And this is an important spot to check out as well. You got your disk or your disk application as well. This checks out the usage and this just shows you the disk in general. So if you have like a hard drive that's plugged in or USB drive that's plugged in, you can safely remove it. You can also do a little formatting there, but I recommend you use like G ported or something like that. Now you got your document viewer, image viewer, problem reporting if you need to, and you can check out your logs and let's check out the log application. So, and you can check out all your important logs, all the logs, if you want to look at them, different application logs. And this is a super cool application. I like seeing it in, you know what I'm saying? That way people can get an understanding of how logging works in Linux. That's pretty much it. I also wanted to show you guys this system monitor. It's kind of like your system manager in Windows, you know, shows you all your processes, your resources, your file system, so all your hard drives, you know, all that information you want to see for a system. Now that wraps up my overview of for Linux 39. And we talked about the key features of this release. And I hope you're as excited as I am about Fedora 39 and what it has to offer. Now, if you have any questions or thoughts about Fedora 9, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I'm always happy to engage with the Linux community and provide you with information if you need it. Now, before I go, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay up to date with my Linux content because I always have more exciting Linux related videos and tutorials coming your way. And thanks for joining me today. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And of course, keep it techie.